Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of LME three-month nickel and zinc. I'll start with LME three-month nickel. I am sorry, but this one is a long commentary, as we have a lot to talk about here. So here goes. Right, yet again, and now for many months now, I have looked at this daily chart on a weekly basis, seeing the same basic drivers that were, are still moving this market higher, despite the occasional hiccup. The rock of certainty is still anchored on a few patterns with a new kid in town now. The original patterns were the middle time currently at 17,345 and the upper time currently at 2840 of the huge yet shallowly bullish 2017 2018 bullish shift pitchfork. The upper time had been especially significant back in September when the top of the market was capped by this very same upper time to the point. May soon be asked to play that role again. I also once again recognize the recent role of the lower time, currently 19.975 of the October 2020 to March 2021 bullish shift pitchfork in showing the more recent bullish angle of attack, especially as support two and three weeks ago when it worked in conjunction with the slowly rising long moving average, currently at 18.120. I'd like to quote once again something I originally said now some 12 weeks ago, and I quote, Whilst these two pitchforks are in operation, this market will still have the bullish incentive, even if it sometimes looks like it is missing. End of quote. This had gone a long way to mitigating the action, specifically two actions, one seen in mid-September in the touch and go lower from the upper time of the big old 2017-2018 bearish shift pitchfork, and more recently, by, more recently by the drop down and sharp reversal back up from the lower time of the October 2020 to March 2021 bullish shift pitchfork. So the question I posed two weeks ago was, what now? Well, prices as you can see have halted their decline at the previously mentioned supports of the long moving average in the lower time and then started to move back up again at the end of two weeks ago. Early last week, everything seemed to halt for a moment at the short medium moving average currently 19170. But then at the end of last week, prices punched up through this congestion, which looks like it might have been a nascent bull flag, railing higher into this week and through today what would have been the target for such a pattern, roughly at the middle time currently of 2285 of the October 2020 to March 2021 bullish shift pitchfork. Today we're moving higher, testing some congestion at 2500 and very close to the September high at 2705. This is what I meant earlier on when I said the upper time, currently 2840, may be asked to play the role of capping the market again, as we are very close to these topside levels. What is more, should it do so, that is, break over the previous high at 2705, then we would be set to possibly make a monthly key reversal up in October. And not only that, but an immediate countering monthly key reversal up thereby countering September's key reversal down. If we exceeded that high, then we'd need to close over 19,600 to verify it on the close of business of Friday, the 29th of October. We have over a week left, just over a week left, to see if this will work out or not. There is an additional piece, something I spoke about last week, that will also feature here. I mentioned earlier, and also again last week, that there was a new kid in town, a bullish kid. It is the April to September bullish shift pitchfork, specifically the middle time, currently at 19.525, which had shown resistance early last week, but saw the market emphatically cross over last Friday. And now the untested upper time, currently 21.145. That if the market breaks the upper time of the 2017-2018 bullish shift pitchfork, well, it will become the next resistance to be tackled on the top side. It's all getting very, very, very interesting now. What happens in the next few days, and especially at the month end, may see some significant strategic moves begin. I'll be here for that. LME 3-month zinc. 
Now, if I sound some, somewhat impassioned by this matter, well, it is because I am. I have warned anyone who will listen for 10 weeks now that something like this was going to happen in zinc. I said in my commentary some 10 weeks ago, and in the weeks since that time, that on the surface this metal looked like a gently rising market, but there have been, and still are, some significant forces at play here, and all is not what it looks like. In the most recent weeks, the market has risen higher, sticking all the time to the broken May-to-date rising uptrend, currently at 32.11, at least until last week, and mainly sticking to the underside of it. I made the following comment some 14 weeks ago. Yes, that's right, 14 weeks ago. And I quote, It seems to me that the market is currently trying to navigate up this uptrend, but it has at the steering wheel somebody heavily inebriated, overcompensating each day as prices generally move in the direction that is wanted. This is not safe, nor it can last. I would urge caution for when the drunken driver of the market either stops or gets pulled over. End of quote. Well, the drunken driver at the controls of this market decided that last week would be a nice time to take a detour up a mountain, of all things. I even conservatively left the old targets X1 and X2 on a daily chart. They were the, or are, the initial and full target levels for the diamond continuation pattern formed over January to March this year. The market reached already target X1 in the 3095 area back in September. The spark that set off this rocket of a market was made two weeks ago, on the Wednesday when we had a key reversal down. Yet this key reversal down was not what it seemed, as the following Thursday we made an immediate countering bullish open and close white marabozo, along with a bullish engulfing pattern. This was the spark that set off the rocket, leading to the extraordinary rises. In the process, the market finally achieved target X2 in the 32.15 area last week, which I've been about to retire it, but kept it on just in case. The action during September more recently has shown that the diamond pattern from much, much earlier this year has indeed been the driver for these moves. These moves higher. And despite some attempted bearish looking patterns in September, it was the reason we saw bullish actions. Looking forward, I can only still think that watching the broken May 2020 today uptrend carry a 32.11 despite it being so far below the current market, would seem to be a reasonable thing to do. has been a significant attractor to this market, while well, this market's original move higher, and despite prices straying away from it, it will still act, at least in part, as showing a bullish angle of attack, despite recent highs. The next thing to look for out for will be how does the market behave when it gets down to the 50% Fibonacci line at 34.77 for this extraordinary move higher. Currently it looks like we are heading there with some support ahead of it at 35.51 and resistance at the February 2018 high at 35.95 just above it. If it gets there, how will it act? That may well decide what will be the next thing. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Services International Limited. Here comes the final bit.